everyone knows that the lower your latency, the more godlike your gameplay can be. While that's definitely true, Benji Fishy has lately been showing us that you can still slay out on high ping. All the way from across the pond, Benji's been participating in North America's Cash Cups, pinging anywhere from 60 to 100, with results nothing short of remarkable. We're talking back-to-back -back top five finishes, man, which is honestly just beyond impressive. Most of us can't even win money on 20 ping, and Benji's out here like getting thousands from NA every week. And for our question of the day, what ping do you guys play on? What's going on, guys? It's the Motivation Guy. That's right, your friend, say it with me, the one and only Keith Allen. Listen, I hope you guys are having a good time this week. Make sure to keep going. Make sure to stay positive and love every person that comes your way. Don't ever quit. Don't quit at anything. Don't quit at this game. Don't quit in life and keep persevering, all right? Connect with me on my Instagram. I would love to hear from you guys. If you're looking to get better at Fortnite and be able to compete, ProGuides.com is the place to be. We have all new courses which update every week and tons of top-tier content from your favorite pros. One thing YouTube doesn't offer is structure, and we got a lot of that here at ProGuides. You can have a one-on-one -on -one session with a professional coach. So, what are you waiting for? Click the link in the description below. All right, guys, this is my favorite time because we're going to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy, that bunch of crunch, and let's get this going. With higher ping comes more delay on every build, edit, and shot. So, typical build fight actions feel significantly sluggish to Benji on NA servers. We've noticed that, you know, when he's on his home turf, he's a lot more confident in taking early game fights. But when he's playing an international event, he considers each battle a lot harder. Here's a clip involving Benji from another player's perspective, Hogman. Just listen to what he has to say. That's Benji right there. So he's a U player. That's why he's building like that. And he's pickaxe swinging in first zone because he doesn't want to fight because he's in 100 ping. <clears throat> See, told you. So, as you just saw, and as was explained by Hogman, Benji was swinging his pickaxe midair to signal he didn't want to fight. Players have been doing that a lot lately for mutual benefit, usually during the late game though. But here, Benji's signaling during the first 10 minutes of the match. He's saying, hey, let's not fight this. And then we can both go farm more mats, get a better position, and look for better kill opportunities. Because just looking at how the fight was starting, there wasn't any advantage for either player. It would be a very long, drawn out battle that hurts them both. You know, we were able to see a very brief glimpse of this moment from Benji's perspective here. He wasn't low on materials, had full health, and had a lovely inventory. So it reasons like he was avoiding the fight because of his ping disadvantage. While he would probably embrace the action on EU, he'd rather avoid it on high ping. You know, it's just too risky. Benji isn't entirely passive throughout the whole tournament though. We've spotted two circumstances where he'll typically play more aggressively. One is during the first few games of the tournament. Everyone starts off at zero points, right? And for Benji, one of the final finest players in the world, these opponents are nowhere near his skill level. So he plays these matches way more aggressively. Simply because, even with the high ping, he knows he can destroy nearly everyone he comes across. Like in this example, right here, like right here. If this weren't a low point match, Benji would have took this fight. Not only is he starting on the low ground, but the storm is moving in as well. He doesn't really need anything in terms of materials or healing items either. So there's little incentive or logic behind taking this fight, besides getting the kill point. But just look at how easy this is for him. No problem whatsoever. Well, except for one. Taking walls. We noticed that throughout his matches on NA, Benji was having an especially hard time replacing structures. I know there's supposed to be a coin flip and everything like that, but wall replacing still seems to be against high ping players. What Benji does to help him secure his kills is play mind games and fake his opponents out. Even a move as simple as this. Benji pretends he's going in for another piece, but then immediately drops down and goes for the same wall. That little bit of misdirection is enough to end the fight right then and right there. Or in this fight right here, check this out. Benji goes to apply pressure on his opponent's wall. He's swinging from the corner. This gives him immediate cover to fall behind should there be an edit play. And it also makes it less likely for his opponent to know what wall he's hitting. He can't quite get the wall, so Benji gets up on his roof and puts down two ramps, another juking technique right here. With two stairs instead of one, the enemy is less likely to know which wall you're gonna go for. This one, unfortunately, doesn't work either. All right, so check this out. Look at this last fake out. <laughs> Benji pulls out his pickaxe, as if he's like going for the wall, but immediately he goes back to his shotgun. His opponent saw the pickaxe and thought it was safe to edit. No, sorry my friend. That's what we call getting outplayed. 
The other situation where he'll play aggressively is whenever he can just get a significant starting advantage. What constitutes a starting advantage depends on the scenario. It could be something as simple as just spotting your opponent first and lasering some clean shots on him. Like in this instance, Benji gets some easy shots in and sees white health. So of course, he's going to push for the kill. Even just knowing how to have a faster landing can give you guys the advantage right away. But if your drops are pretty equal, it's more about knowing where the other players landed and how they're going to be looting. You know, a lot of that involves reading your opponent's next move and setting up to eliminate them. Like with this, Benji has the right idea to go on the roof for a better vantage point. His opponent has that idea too, but Benji just straight up shreds him anyway. If you don't necessarily have high pain, you should still try to follow the same strategies as Benji. Always attempt to confuse your opponent in a fight. Predictability is terrible, guys, and <laughs> you don't want that. And try to look for starting advantages before you fight as well. That helps big time. Awareness is critical if you're going to get the drop on players, so always pay close attention to your surroundings. All right, so this end game right here is the perfect example of how you can have almost nothing and still manage to recover. All right, so you guys got to pay close attention because Benji uses a lot of clever maneuvering to find his limbs right here. The trouble starts with Benji getting tagged by an unexpected RPG. Ooh. Yeah, not much he could have done about that. Immediately, he reinforces his structures and branches out to avoid any other spam. Very smart. With that, he's able to get two of his minis off. Cool. But look at the situation right here, right? Only one mini shield left and over 20 players still alive. Ooh, that's, that's an issue. Benji's gonna have to go for kills if he wants to win this one. He's still got one resource in high quantity, though, and that is materials. So at this point, it's not gonna be worth risking health law just to save a few mats. So he doesn't hold back and time everywhere. Also notice how he's always trying to stay as far ahead as possible. You know, in terms of safety and finding kills, being close to the next safe zone is generally one of the best positions during the late game. Unfortunately, he does get tagged up a couple times, you know, rendering him unable to look for limbs. So at this point, Benji's now out of shields and materials with only 49 health remaining. Finding a kill is paramount. So he heads towards the edge of the storm for maximum unexpectedness. <laughs> He isn't able to finish the first player he finds here, but he does manage to drop down and catch a player off guard. Now, it is odd that this opponent in the storm here didn't see Benji, but with some fantastic sound awareness, Benji totally notices him. He makes the edit and takes the free a limb. Benji was probably thinking, Big pots and some fish? Thanks, bro. <laughs> For real. This guy just saved his life right here. With the floppers now in his inventory, Benji's not afraid to take some storm damage. Although it seems counterintuitive and doesn't make a lot of sense, as long as he's not in there for too long, the storm is actually keeping him safe. There are players directly ahead of him fighting, and by staying where no one would expect, he's avoiding it all. Not only can it be safer, but it can also help you find the limbs too. This next player had no idea where he got shot from, making it so much easier for Benji just to walk up and snag the limb. Ooh, snazzy. All right, now, here's another example of playing the storm with floppers. Benji spots this player to his right, since floppers heal for 50 HP, and Benji's missing 20. It means he can tank another 30 in the storm and still get a full heal. So instead of tunneling straight ahead, he goes right into the storm in an attempt to find that player. Now Benji doesn't see the guy here, but we still think it's a great example of how you should be using your health and fish as resources in the late game. Instead of just stopping the heal immediately, Benji works his way inward. That way, he'll have more time to get the full heal off and still is going to be in a strong position. But look at that! Woo! Wow! After a rocky start, Benji's back at max health and ready to pop off. Being full HP, he's confident to take fights. It looks like he even goes for a high ground take right here, but gets interrupted when a player drops on his ramp. Since he's now getting focused, the high ground play is impossible. He remains low and he finds another straggler. While chugging a big pot, some dude drops right next to Benji. What the hell that he's got? As well as the right hand peeker advantage, Benji's not afraid to take this trade. He picks up the frag and goes for another. Again, with the confidence of being at full health, he's gonna take this fight head on. All right, guys, so finally, it's down to a one versus one. With the RPG still available, Benji takes out the high ground and cranks up. Now he's got the advantage a couple of meaty shots later, and Benji picks up another win. All right, so notice like right here was really nothing latency dependent. Even at 70 ping, the end game is very much playable. We can say that keen awareness for kills, utilizing fish, and knowing how to tunnel ahead quickly are the fundamental skills you need to survive in games in this meta, no matter what ping you get. 
If you're on high ping, my friends, and you want to maximize your results, try to play as Benji Fishy does. To sum it all up, this is what you got to do. You want to avoid early and mid-game fights as much as possible. One-on-one -on -one battles are just that much harder with substantial delay. And even if your ping is on the lower end, it's still a great practice to try and play for end games. If you're able to start a fight with some cheeky tags or some other advantage, that's when you want to take them the most. However, you know, you're often better off disengaging, playing for the end game if the situation isn't already in your favor. When you do make it to the end of a match, any moment where you need resources, you're going to have to go for kills. And the best way to get them is to be unexpected. Navigate around old structures and tunnels. Drop down on players. Utilize the storm if you got to. And please start carrying and using fish if you aren't already. Please. No one expects when you're in the storm, so it can snowball into several free kills if you're lucky. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, this is the motivation guy. That's right, your friend, Keith Allen. Listen, make sure to connect with me because I believe in you. Man, 2020 is going to be the best year of your life. Hope you believe that it's going to be awesome. Connect with me as soon as you can on my Instagram. We really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to visit ProGuys.com. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you'd like to see next because we just aim to bring you guys daily quality content. So do us a favor by liking the video, subscribe to the channel, and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. We'll see you on the next one.